Hello everybody. Greetings once again from Chennai in South India. Today I am going to talk about a few atypical forms of fixed drug eruption. Drug eruptions are very common, particularly in today's scenario due to the cornucopian pro proliferation of drugs in daily usage. They can present in a variety of patterns, so much so that drug eruptions are called the greatest simulators of skin diseases, displacing syphilis from that pedestal. Unfortunately, there is no specific lab test to diagnose a drug eruption. And we still fall back upon the ancient method of withdrawing the suspect drug to see whether the rash disappears and if conditions permit, re-challenge the patient with the same drug to see if such rashes recur. For severe drug eruptions, such re-challenge may be dangerous and even unethical, even if the patient is willing to undergo that test. But there is one type of drug reaction called fixed drug eruption, FDE which dermatologists can diagnose with a fair amount of certainty based on the history of recurrence at the same site and the morphology of the skin lesions. However, ex even experienced dermatologists can miss the diagnosis of FDE when it presents in atypical forms. We'll consider some of these unusual variants of fixed drug eruption. A drug in its broad definition is any agent or combination of agents, organic or inorganic, which is used in medical diagnosis, prophylaxis or therapy. The term FDE, fixed drug eruption, was first coined by Brock in 1894 and later Shelley called it an island of hypersensitivity. Clinically, the characteristic features of FDE is its occurrence exactly at the same site every time the drug is administered. It starts with variable pruritus at the site with redness and a dusky color in the center within a few minutes to few hours after exposure to the responsible drug. This may then progress to edema and blistering. Once the drug is withdrawn, the reaction subsides with desquamation in 7 to 10 days time, leaving behind a characteristic pigmentation which in turn may last for several months. Rarely, if the drug is repeatedly taken, a generalized bullous eruption closely simulating Steven Johnson syndrome or epidermolysis bullosa, toxic epidermolysis may result. The common sites of occurrence of FDE are the lips, the glands, penis, the palms and soles, but lesions may occur anywhere on the body. The diagnosis of FDE depends on number one, history of lesions occurring at the same site, leaving behind pigmentation. Two, re-challenging the patient with the suspect drug using only half the therapeutic dosage. Three, patch testing with the suspect drug in 10 to 20% white petrolatum jelly. This is put as a patch on the skin, which is removed after 48 hours. This is safer than oral challenge, but it doesn't always give positive results. Four, histopathology showing an interface dermatitis with marked increase in melanophages in the upper dermis, which accounts for the pigmentation of this drug reaction. Five, immunohistochemistry has identified intraepidermal T cells in basal and suprabasal keratinocytes in the lesional skin, which is a strong clue to the diagnosis of FDE. The pathogenesis is not known, but it is certainly an immune-mediated reaction. 
So we'll consider a few of the unusual or atypical forms of FDE, which can even confound, as I said earlier, experienced dermatologists. First, fixed drug eruption can be confined only to the mucosa, like the palate, conjunctiva, vagina, rectum, and the tongue. Curiously, the tongue lesions are said to occur more commonly in patients who are heroin addicts. Two, fixed drug eruption occurring under the nail can very closely simulate melanoma. Three, a recurrent pustular eruption on the cheek in a patient occurred every time he took ampicillin drug, leaving behind the characteristic pigmentation. This was reported from Singapore. Four, diffuse pigmentation simulating Addison's disease rarely occurs if the patient inadvertently exposed repeatedly to the responsible drug. Five, linear fixed drug eruption was noted in France in a patient who took intramuscular cefazolidine and the pigmentation occurred along Blasco's lines. Six, Shelley reported a case of a young woman who went into a deep coma every time she took meprobamate as a sedative. Physical examination and all available investigations at that time, this was in the pre-CT uh, scan MRI days, it failed to reveal a cause other than the drug intake. A few days later, she totally recovered from the coma without any neurological sequelae. And this happened on two or three occasions. And so Shelley postulated a fixed drug reaction occurring at the base of the brain of reticular formation uh, due to the drug meprobamate. Seven, post-coital FDE. In 1997, in the Clinical and Experimental Nematology Journal, a case was reported of a 34-year-old man who developed FDE on the coronal sulcus a few hours after he had intercourse with his wife. He, he was known to be allergic to sulfur, but he firmly denied taking any drug over the past fortnight or so. But his wife, interestingly, was on Bactrim for two weeks for a respiratory infection. So it was postulated that the drug entered his system through the source of the body fluids. Eight, non-pigmented FDE. In 1937, Abramovitz et al. reported the first case in a patient who was taking a muscle relaxant called espirone hydrochloride. It appears as large, symmetrical, well-demarcated, tender erythematous plaques Nine, fixed sunlight eruption. Recurrent erythematous plaques appeared at the same place after sun exposure and they left behind pigmentation at these sites. A somewhat related reaction called fixed solar urticaria was reported in the Journal of American Academy, August 1993, where the wheels were limited to fixed skin site after sun exposure. 10. Fixed food eruption. This occurs after taking particular food items and the reactions occurred at the same site, leaving behind the characteristic pigmentation. Actually, this may not be due to the food itself, but due to contamination by uh, chemicals, antibiotics, etc., which will be added to the food item. Treatment of fixed drug eruption. This is mostly cosmetic in nature. Patients are worried about the black pigment on the skin. Topical lightening creams are not very effective since the melanin pigment, as I've already mentioned, is occurring deeper in the dermis and within melanophages, unlike in melasma, where it is more superficial. NDIAG laser may help a little bit, but avoiding the responsible drug is the most important treatment. But unfortunately, the patient may inadvertently be exposed not to the drug itself, but to some related chemicals. For instance, giving an example, 
A person who develops FDE to phenolphthalein, which is found in many of the laxatives, may develop FDE even when he completely avoids laxatives due to the presence of this chemical in candy, port wine, pink icings in cake, and colored toothpaste, etc. So fixed drug eruption continues to be a microcosm of dermatological allergy, which is fascinating and challenging, not only to the dermatologists, but also to the immunologists. Thank you.